We're all opened up with Becky Lynch coming out, where she admitted she admitted she had been a horrible person, and she flat out told us it was time to be a babyface again. No more stupid outfits, she said. She's just going to be the man. But unfortunately, she is injured. And she called out Bianca. They hugged. She told Bianca that we'll, uh, I'll see you again down the road, hold down the fort. And uh, she leaves. And then Bianca's doing a promo. And as she's doing this promo, they cut backstage. And Bailey, Kai, and Sky have beaten up and destroyed Becky Lynch's shoulder. And so Becky will be out of action for a while. But it was a good interview segment. Did you like the fact that Bianca ran to the back, twirling her braid? Well, that's, that's the only way she knows how to run. That's You know, to people talk about, hey, they put a battery in my back you know, to fire me up. No, she's got the old crank method. That's how she gets anywhere. <laughs> we, had, uh, we had two three-way matches, two triple threats. The winners would face off, and the winner of that would get a shot at Bobby Lashley's U.S. title next week. And so, to get it over... They had a video package of all sorts of former U.S. champions in both NWA, WCW, WWE, and it was a uh, good little video package. We had a Logan Paul babyface promo vowing to be back, which the people in the crowd actually cheered. So we may have turned a corner with old Logan Paul for the time being. First triple thread match, AJ, Ali, and The Miz. They got nine minutes. It was a good match. AJ and Ali were really good together. And the finish was great. Ollie hits the 450 on Miz, but he pops to his feet right upside down into the Styles Clash. AJ gives him the Styles Clash onto Miz, pins Ollie, and so AJ advances in this little mini tournament here. Got some backstage interviews, and then Seth Rollins comes out, and he's making fun of Riddle, calling him an idiot. Out come the Street Profits, and the Street Profits, they want a match with Seth Rollins. And, you know, Seth is, says, you know, you guys are losers. You gonna, why don't you go lose to the Usos again? And Montez says, aren't you a guy that lost to Seth Rollins with one booby? His delivery was better than it sounds, and it actually got a big pop. So they are going to do rock, paper, scissors to see which one of them gets to face Rollins. And right as they're about to do the game, Montez cheats on his partner, grabs a ref, sprints to the ring, and so he gets the match. That was interesting. They also once again acknowledge, Seth goes, maybe you guys should just break up. So I don't know what's going on, but they're certainly teasing that. So with Seth Rollins, Montez Ford, it was good because Seth Rollins is great. Montez needs a lot of singles matches if he's going to be a single star because he looked like a tag guy doing a singles match. But they gave him a lot, and the announcers played it up like it was a star-making singles performance, even though Seth beat him at the end. Uh, Ford went for the big splash. Rollins got the knees up, hit him with the uh, curb stomp, pinned him. Goes through it again. Dawkins runs him off. So, obviously, it's setting up Dawkins and Seth Rollins. We had Alexa and Asuka. They went two minutes. All of the other women ran in. And clearly, uh, and then Bel Air made the save to set up Bel Air. And she said, any of you three. And uh, it was accepted by EO Sky. And a Chad Gable promo, which led to Ciampa, Chad Gable, and Dolph Ziggler. They got 10 minutes. This was also a very good match. And they have, you know, Hunter's in. Ciampa's his guy. And so this show was all about, hey, listen, you guys that have watched Ciampa be just a total nothing happening afterthought geek on this show. He's actually great. And so that was the point of this uh, show, really. And he ended up getting the win here. With the uh, running knee, the fairy tale ending on Chad Gable. So he goes on to face uh, AJ Styles later. Edge promo. Guys, remember those horrible Edge heel promos we had to put up with for, you know, two months or whatever? Well, he's a babyface now. He comes out. He says, I was a real jerk. I was trying to get these young guys over. The first thing they did was turn on me. So now I will kill what I have created. I will end the judgment day. And he was done. Got in, got out. Good promo. Still looks like DDP. But hey, it's not a negative. We had uh, clips from the, the cursed tryouts. They didn't show uh, any of the people who got injured. We had Bianca and Io Sky. They did go to a no contest again when all of the women ran in. And it was a bad finish. But 
It was a good match. Bianca and Io, the former Io Shirai, getting 17 minutes on Raw. Did a lot of good stuff. All the women ran in. We had a huge brawl. Crowd chanted, let them fight. So clearly they're they're all in on this women's division. And we're going to see a lot of tags and six persons and singles matches. And that's going to be the focus of the show coming for the next uh, few months here. We had Ciampa versus AJ Styles, Booker T on commentary. Another very good match. They gave Ciampa a ton. AJ looked really good. Air raid crash. Uh, Styles clash attempts. Uh, finally, he hit it, but Miz put Ciampa's foot on the bottom rope. Styles throws Miz into the timekeeper area. They brawl outside. Ciampa dives into the ring. AJ tries to get back into the ring, but uh, Miz is out there. He grabs his foot. The ref goes, seven, eight. You're thinking, oh, my God, another bad finish. But actually, he breaks free. AJ flies into the ring, right into a knee strike, right into the fairy tale ending. Ciampa beats AJ, and it is Tom- Tommaso Ciampa getting the championship match against Bobby Lashley next week on the show, which should also be a very good match. Then the main event, very good main event. It was Usos versus Ray and Dominic, and they gave Dominic a lot here. I think they they want you to think that he's not just some random, you know, geek, son of Ray Mysterio. Got a lot of big spots. Ray looked great. And uh, finally, Ray super kicks, uh, gets super kicked outside. Dominic is up on the post. They're going for something horrifying, but uh, he comes off. Goes for the 619, gets hit with a 1D out of nowhere, pinned. Usos retain the titles. Judgment Day hits the ring. They're beating him down. And finally, Edge runs down to make the save, and they check on poor Dominic. Because there was a spot where as Edge is making his big comeback, he goes for the spear, but Rhea pulls Dominic in front, and so Edge spears Dominic. And so they're still teasing that uh, Dominic is going to ultimately join the Judgment Day. I guess we'll see. But I thought this was a much improved episode of Monday Night Raw. I thought so as well, too. And Ali and Ciampa are two sides of the same coin because you need to have layers. You need to have stars. That's absolutely something they need to make more of. Big, big stars. Not having Brock and Roman around all the time. You see what that's left you. But as you re-strengthen Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley and figure out what you're going to do with Theory and all that stuff, you need an undercard, and you need an undercard with credibility. And Ciampa and Ali can be those guys. They don't have to be the world champion. I don't think I'll ever see them wrestle, you know, main eventing a WrestleMania. That's okay. But I, to see them beat some people lower than them and make sure that they're established as a, at a higher level, I'm all for that making the U.S. title important again and making the Intercontinental title important again because you have it on two monsters. You have Lashley and you have Walter. This is the perfect time to make, you know, to try to re- Imagine those belts. And frankly, as you move forward, that might be more and more important because look at the world title situation. Look what they can offer. What can WWE offer somebody coming over from, you know, somewhere else? Time off as world champion. And with the way the the world champion is now, they don't have to be there all the time. And if you have serious people competing for the U.S. and Intercontinental titles and they mean something on those brands, then you don't actually have to have the world title around all of the time and have it defended every month on pay-per-view. So that's really important to me. You know, making sure those titles get built back up again. Hopefully they see we see what they're doing right now with the women's division. They still need bodies, certainly for SmackDown, so we'll see how it goes over there as well, too. But to see Ciampa, to see Ali featured at all was nice, but to see Ciampa kind of be put in a position where he's going to be relatively strong, that's a good thing. We need more people like that. So a couple of you here are like, ah, Dom is a geek. He lost again. Listen, if Dominic is going to leave and join the Judgment Day, Well, of course he should. That's the point. That's the angle. The angle is he can't win with his father. Every time he's in there with his father, he loses. And then Edge, who's supposedly friends with his father, spears him. Oh, boy. Okay? This all... And the other thing is, uh, Jingo here goes, why would anyone want Dominic in their group? Seriously, from a kayfabe perspective, why would you want this geek? Bro, how many times 
did Wheeler Yuta get a win on AEW television before he was recruited by the Blackpool Combat Club? How many wins did Daniel Garcia get before he was recruited into the Jericho pre The point is, the heels, the idea is the heels see something in the guy. They see that he can't win. They recruit him away from his father because they also want to screw his father with the idea that we'll teach this guy. We'll teach this guy to be an underhanded whatever and actually win matches. That's the storyline. It's been uh, the storyline has been done in wrestling for a thousand years. Boy, Dominic I... has to lose and get recruited by the heels. That's the story. I hope Ray reaches out to uh, Cameron Grimes right now because there are a lot of daddy issues that people want to settle for them. It's crazy. This was the best thing on the show, and uh, the show was all downhill from there. So uh, I guess I can continue on to uh, Dana Brooke beat Becky Lynch. And that, my friends, is Monday Night Raw. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.